Probably better questions. So joining us in our Hangout, we have Diego Joven. He's director of the documentary film A Dream Without a Visa. We also have Donnie Durite, a sketch comic and aspiring actor and actress mm -hmm. Megan Lynch. D Diego, uh, let's start Hi. with you, man. Hey, you have a question for either Abby or, or David? Yeah, I do have several. Um, uh, David, I, I know you. I, I've seen all your work and I actually worked on a film with Sharon Stone about immigration and one of your actresses, uh, Giovanna Zacarias, you, yes. you probably remember her. Yes. And I traveled all the way from South America into Central America, Mexico and the US, uh, documenting the human side and, and the psychology that most migrants endure throughout their journeys. And what you said about some, the, the, that if there's a Mexican dream, for many migrants from Central America, there is. Um, even actors from Central America, uh, especially Costa Rica, Mexico is like the the USA for for them, mm. and and also for for Abby. Um, I would love to hear your perspective as a migrant because you you've traveled from I guess from Australia to to the US, um, mm. seeking your acting career, and what how did you digest it um, the the way. America see immigrants, especially the Latino immigrants. Mm. Any thoughts? Massive question. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. I question. told you mine were easy. <laughs> you know, are I, I, I was with the Minutemen people and some other big groups that are and we, against immigration, and they they hunt migrants with weapons that not even the Border Patrol carry. And their perspective of uh, immigrants were that they bring diseases. They're terrorists. They don't pay taxes. Um, things that are just not real. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear what's your opinion about this. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to let David talk for a minute because David's David knows a lot more than I do on about this. It. And yeah, and I'll probably just get emotional <laughs> about it. No. So yeah, you I, go. <laughs> well, I, I, um, I'm, I'm deeply upset by it, by what you're saying, for a number of reasons because. The first thing that we need to remember is that there are no borders for the large corporations. Effectively, General Motors and Walmart live in a world of, quote, free trade, where they move with lightning speed not only their capital, but their products around the planet. They deliberately produce goods in China and assemble them in Mexico to sell in Detroit because it serves their interests. But the people who work in those factories are not allowed to travel. They can't cross those same borders. So there's a hypocrisy at the very core of this discussion. Why is it that we are supposed to feel frightened about new immigrants when all of us, except the Native American people in the United States, we're all that's our story. I know, that's how it yeah. kills that's me. The, that's, what, exactly. that's our story. So we, we're being asked to be Australia amnesia. Too, no? It's the same, it's the same situation in America as in Australia, the history of Australia. You know, we live, for, it's very Aboriginal. similar. It's just Australia, I think, has, de has developed a much more forward attitude with multi, you know, m m being a multicultural society. I was taught that in high school. We are, Australia is multicultural. We accept people from everywhere, different, you know, it doesn't matter what someone looks like or where they're from or what their life is like, we accept them. We accept them. Of course, we've had our issues too. I'm not saying we haven't had our issues and we still have our issues, yeah. but it's mm. what you're saying is, you know what I mean? It's they're so asking us, they're asking us, or we're being asked, right. they is a strange term, who is they? Right. But the culture that we live in, society we live in, is asking us as Americans to make an exceptionalism about our own past. That actually the fact that our yes, families all are uprooted <laughs> and came here totally. in the past is finished because there's a cutoff point and anyone coming in now, I'm, I, my position is very simple. If you go to a restaurant, if, and if you have your lawn cut, right. if you've just bought yeah. a home in a new subdivision, right. you're part of it. Yeah. You're it's, part of it. It's really the most perplexing conundrum, I think, that notion of how we still frame things as us and them when we're really a we, and that's what this country yeah. is. Such yeah, a young country, too. It's really about... Yeah. Donnie, I know you have questions as well. Donnie, go ahead. Absolutely. I was... Um, hello, Abby, and hey, David. Um, I had a question for David. Being that you're basically an independent filmmaker from start, you mentioned that you started dealing with this 10 years ago. How do you think getting this kind of politically driven topic to the masses, does it help you or hinder you? How does it help? I mean, I don't understand how it helps, but 
how hard is it for you to get this kind of message across? Because it's something that's been going on forever. America has been built on the back of immigrants. So how do you yeah. think um, people take this kind of information? How hard is it for you to get it out there? Yeah, thank you for the question. I mean, my first reaction to that is that we, we need stories. People have all, the reason storytelling is still around is because we need it and we love it and it helps us to make sense of the world. And my work is, is to find a way to tell stories that, that also carry some of the political uh, ideas and realities, but it's the story that I'm primarily focused on. It's the story and the character journey that allows Abby Cornish to, to become a part of it. And Absolutely. I think that there, the bigger question is, how do we get uh, people to be aware of the film? Because independent film is a bit of a misnomer. <laughs> George Lucas is an independent filmmaker. Mel Gibson is. They can finance their own films at a studio level out of their bank accounts. We're dependent. As a filmmaker, I've always been dependent on other people working for free, joining us because they're committed to the idea, because they love what this could be as a piece of art. We're dependent filmmakers, and, and we depend on people spreading the word. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here today, to spread yeah. the word. You don't have to be denied <laughs> options and just go see The Exorcist this right. weekend. There's right. a beautiful movie called The Girl that will take you on a journey you do not expect. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm, I mean, I know I'm trying to invite people to the theater, but the truth is yeah. that you, you watch this film. I've done this at screenings where I stop the film 30 minutes in. Yeah. Nobody knows where the story is going. Right. And that's part of the joy is that yeah. you are transported in this movie. Yeah. It's not a film with a political uh, uh, lesson to take away. No. It's a story about a woman's <coughs> awakening. Yeah. That, it's a story that, about humanity. Yeah. And that's probably all the more, I would imagine, it's, I always feel like those stories where you can relate to the characters and the tension, I learn more and I feel like I get more out of it than, yeah. than a political message or being hit over the head. Yeah. With one. And there shouldn't be any fear, like, you know, I mean, I think, I think even for me as an actor, mm -hmm. taking on this role in this film was was scary. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Oh yes. <clears throat> There's All right. no doubt about it. But I get what, what the point that I'm making yeah. is. There should be no fear for anyone to walk into that cinema. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good. Mm. Because you, but you had all the fear. That's a great point. Because trust me. Well, this is where the fear is going to come. There's a little bit of light in there. It's worth going in for. Uh, all right. <laughs> On that point, a little bit of light. Give us some light, uh, Megan. Your question. Hi, David and Abby. Um, as, a, as a writer and actress myself, um, I was just wondering a little bit about the storytelling process. And I wondered, I know all directors have different styles, but um, once the script is written, do you like to stick to that? I know you talked about realism and lyrical realism, but do you leave any room for improvisation on set? Or what, what I guess, is your process? Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful question. I mean, for me, the, the, the process of writing the script is, is a process that doesn't happen in isolation. I really am I'm so immersed in a place and with a group of people. For example, in this film, a lot of young women in South Texas who, if they see this now, I wanna say thank you, young uh, girls in high school who were single moms and young women were very involved in helping me to understand what kind of uh, struggles their daily lives are like. So I'm writing in a way in a direct relationship with people. But then the script is done and you look for that person or those people who are going to bring it to life. Right. And, and I would honestly say that by the time we were filming, actually probably months before, Abby understood this character better than I did. She, she had to because in order, I don't know what the actor does. I know Spike Lee said once, what do you, how do you direct actors? He says, if you have, if you have a Denzel, and I would say if you have an Abby Cornish, you, it's like Michael Jordan, you give them the ball and you step out of the way because they've done all this work to figure out what's there. Yeah. As far as improvisation, every actor is different and, and uh, every project is different, but that's, that's the starting point. Yeah, but I think too when you, I, you know, I mean we do have to acknowledge how well written the script was too, like the script is, was a piece of art in itself. It was so complete and so well written and so beautiful. Like what you see, it hasn't really, like there's a few scenes that were cut, you know, just to, just story wise, but right. most of the dialogue is exactly the same. There was a few words we tweaked here and there, or maybe we removed something because mm. it didn't need to be said with words. It mm. said it was to be said 
with, uh, you know, with, the, with emotion, oh, with yeah. eyes and stuff like that. But it was, David's an incredible writer. It was so beautifully, beautifully crafted, you know. And it's interesting, it's funny, it's a, as an actor, it's like, and it's something, as, as I uh, evolve in my life and as an actor, I be, you know, I think I'm becoming a better collaborator because mm. there's, as an actor, you become so protective of this character. Mm. Mm. You become such a part of yourself that you will go to war for that character. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you believe <laughs> yeah, in something like, well, like David and I had so many amazing moments shooting this movie because right. we both were so invested mm. in everything Everything. Well, and it shows in the trailer, you know? and it really shows in this conversation, to be honest with you. We have many options for our audience as they're watching this live to watch other segments. I just want to read one last comment cool. uh, from T.L. Stryker 14 minutes ago saying, I had to switch back here. I heard Abby getting extremely deep and metaphorical. Lots of the comments. Uh, in a, no, in a good sense, people feel as though... Um, you know, usually it's hard to keep their eyes on the live. Sometimes they, they get led astray. But for those of you who are um, interested in this conversation, I can, I can not only attest to the fact that the trailer is as promising as this conversation paints it out to be. Remember, The Girl opens tomorrow in New York and Los Angeles, and then in other cities on March 22nd. Thank you so much, no, David. thank you. And thank Abby, you. Thank, thank you so you. much for joining us. Thank and for you, those of you watching, much thank more you coming so much. up. Thank you. Yes, thank of course, much. Diego, Donnie, thank and you. Megan. <laughs> You guys, your questions, you outdid me. Maybe you should come have a seat on the couch. All right, thanks so much for watching. Much more coming up.